This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. world if you're laid back it would be very easy for you to be laid off but how easy would it be for you to find your next job let's find out as we spend the day with the CEO and co-founder of Nokri.com Mr. Sanjeev Bhikjandani Yeah, hi. Hi, Ambika. Hi, Ambika. You all set for your morning walk, yeah, I see. Yeah, it's 6 o'clock and I go for a walk with the dog this time. I see. So you studied in Columbus after which you went to St. Stephen's and you after that you worked for three years in Dintas in Mumbai. Uh, one year in Delhi, two years in Mumbai. All right. And uh, then you went to IIM Ahmedabad. That's right. After that you worked for one year. About a year and a half, I'd say. Okay. Where was that? That was in a company called HMM, which right. is now called GlaxoSmithKline. All right. Uh, yeah. And I was in marketing. I was uh, handling uh, brand holics. Okay. 1990, I quit my job and, uh, you know, I moved and we started InfoEdge and uh, we began to do salary surveys and databases and reports kind of things. And uh, that's how I, you know, became an entrepreneur. Was it difficult a transition from being an employee to an employer? Was there a cash crunch of sorts? Yeah, I mean, we were really scared, you know, about uh, we never had enough money for the first three or four years. So in the first three years, actually, uh, the house would run on Surbhi's salary. That's your wife? That's my wife, yeah. And, uh, you know, I would sort of somehow stay afloat and break even. All right. And for three years, I didn't take a salary from the company. Okay. Then, uh, you know, in 1997, we, we launched Nokri. Okay. And then once again, for three years, I could not take a salary. Because, so I, because uh, you know, Nokri sucked up all the resources in the company. So, yeah, financially it's been a roller coaster. We'll discuss what happened after 1997 when you launched Nokri later on. But I mean, in the 90s, you also co authored two books That's right. on getting jobs. Frankly, you know, those books are, I would write them very differently today. They're quite embarrassing actually right now. Uh, Why? They, well, they are, I guess, uh, a little outdated, uh, somewhat, uh, you know, I, I, I would say I didn't have so much knowledge as I have today about the subject. Okay. So tell me the economics of writing a book. How do you get your royalty? Uh, you, you don't make money writing a book in India, or rather very few people make money. Uh, most authors don't make money. So my royalty checks are about a thousand rupees a year. So, so you, do, you, know, you don't do it for royalty. Uh, you don't do it for money. After his walk, Sanjeev is all dressed for the day and currently having breakfast. That's my wife, Surbhi. Hi. Nice meeting you. Hi. Sit here. So when is it that the two of you met each other? Well, uh, in IIM Ahmedabad, that okay. was in 1987. I see. We were both studying uh, for our MBA program and uh, I had gone there after working for one year and Sanjeev had gone there after working for uh, three years. During a morning walk, Sanjeev was telling us that in 1990 when he started the business and the cash flow wasn't enough, you were actually running the house. Well, uh, I was working in Nestle at that time. So, I mean, I guess it did help. <laughs> when you look back, do you ever think uh, you should have continued to be an employee? Because right now you hear of the IM salaries, they pretty much hit the headlines because they're so high. So, do you ever regret the fact that you should have continued to be an employee and not really become an employer. The truth is that corporate salaries were not very high, you know, in the 90s uh, as they are today. Uh, so even if you're a struggling entrepreneur, you were losing uh, as compared to what you would have earned in a job, but you were not losing that much. Uh, the average salary of our class when we finished IM, uh, the average salary was about less than 4,000 rupees a month, which is about 44,000 per annum. So 1997 is uh, when you started Nokri.com. Yeah. And uh, during the whole uh, IT bust, I believe you worked with Pioneer for a while. Mm, I worked with Pioneer before we took venture capital. Okay. 
from around 96 to 2000. Uh, basically, when we launched Nokri, uh, you know, the company could not afford to pay me a salary. And, uh, you know, I was interested in writing anywhere. I'd written two books. And uh, so Chandan, uh, you know, called me and said, look, we are launching a career supplement uh, called Avenues. You are in the careers business. Would you like to be a consulting editor? So I gladly accepted because I liked the work, because I needed the money, because the company could not pay me a salary. And so for four years, I worked as a pioneer. Of course, post-98, uh, you know, I assisted Chandan with the management of the pioneer after he bought it. I assisted him in buying it out, assisted him in raising money, and assisted him in running it for a while. 2000, I moved back full-time to Nokri. So uh, what I would do is that I would, you know, for about three years, I was doing two jobs. Uh, I would, um, you know, spend about six, seven hours a day in the pioneer, and about another seven, eight hours a day in Nokri. So I was working about two, three hours a day for about three years. So uh, it was difficult in one sense, but uh, it would be impossible right now because Nokri has grown so big. How big is it now? Right now we are over 900 employees. We have 40 offices. We um, did a turnover of 84 crores last year and uh, 45 crores the year before that. So we are growing at a fairly fast rate. Now you recently did have a venture capitalist from the Silicon Valley investing in the company. Can you give us some details of that deal? Uh, our first round of investment came from ICICI in the year 2000 when they invested 7.3 crores and took a stake of 15% in the company. Uh, we've recently closed a round with uh, Kleiner Perkins and uh, Shell Palo Ventures. Uh, they are investors in Silicon Valley and you know we do look forward to uh, their operating expertise uh, you know, in, in helping us build a bigger company, uh, running bigger websites, uh, because they do have experience with helping companies like Google, like, like Amazon. And so we hope to profit from their experience and we hope to gain from their networks. What will be our first stop after breakfast? First stop after breakfast will be my cabin in the office. Well, Sanjeev seems to be the world's greatest dad, but is he the world's greatest boss? We'll find out after he's done checking his emails. Now, how would you say you are as a boss? Uh, are you a great boss or are you the Hari Sadhu kind of a boss? Uh, <laughs> you have to ask somebody else that, not me. <laughs> how did that ad really come into being and it led you into quite a bit of a controversy? Are you out of it? We ran the ad. We got a complaint from a gentleman who's uh, in Chandigarh uh, who said his son is being teased in school because of that. The son's name is Hari Bhanot. In that letter, he said that uh, either remove or modify the ad or we will take legal action and go to the media also. So we replied to him, but before we replied, uh, before he received that letter, uh, he sent us a legal notice and he went to the media and the whole controversy was created. Then we issued our response officially as a press release and then that got covered and that's how the controversy happened. Uh, however, they have not filed any case and it's now been several months. Uh, I don't think uh, there was really an issue. Uh, it was perhaps an overreaction. When we started doing business with FCB Ulka, which is the agency who created the ad planning, uh, we gave them a lot of data about job seeking, careers, job seekers, customer, who, what, all sorts of data from all over the world. Now, there was one nugget of information which said that 80% of people don't leave companies, they don't leave for salary, they don't leave for challenge, they leave their bosses. Let's face it, everybody's had a bad boss, and every boss is also somebody else's subordinate, or has been at some point in time. So this is the kind of thing that, that everybody can relate to. And we figured that if you allow a job seeker to, in a humorous situation, to relive his fantasy of getting back at his bad boss, you know, it will be a memorable ad. It can be a funny ad. All right, now you are in the business of uh, human resources. Would you say people are born leaders or do they become leaders? No, I would say that uh, it's mostly becoming leaders. You've got to work at it. It works, comes from experience. Naturally, there are a few instinctive abilities of relating to people. But even those, I guess, you learn as you go along in school and college. And when you start working, you perhaps learn about it a little bit more. But I would say leaders not born. I mean, you become a leader. So you wouldn't say there's something called a natural leader who has natural leadership qualities. What appears to be natural has probably been acquired over the years. Right. And uh, getting the right job, is it uh, luck, destiny, being at the right place at the right time, or hard work? It's obviously both. I would say keep on trying. If you're in the right place, you know, if, you're, if you're in enough places enough times, working hard, chances are you'll be in the right place sometime. 
some time. Okay. And uh, now we are here in your office right now. This is a very interesting looking wall. How did it come about? Oh, uh, you know, in the year 2000, shortly after we got funding from ICICI, we rented this building. Um, and uh, we hired an, uh, an architect for the interiors, uh, Ram Joshi, a friend of mine. And uh, we came out of the idea that, uh, you know, we should do uh, Hindi movie dialogues of graffiti. So we gave it to the architect that, look, what if we do this idea? And he said, great idea. Let's work on it. And he developed it further and said, we'll hire an artist to visualize it. Right. And so six, seven, you know, of, of my colleagues, uh, we all got together. We thought of about 50 or 60 dialogues from various Hindi movies. And prepared a list, gave it to the artist. She came in on a weekend. She took the lines she, could, she liked and she visualized them and she painted over a weekend. Right. Which ones are your contributions? Which dialogues are yours? Uh, mm, that one, Mere Paas Ma Hai. Uh, now, Sanjeev, you have 39 outfits in India and one in Dubai. Going ahead, what are your expansion plans? We are definitely, in fact, looking at uh, currently evaluating at the evaluation stage of looking at other markets. Uh, and in fact, I'm headed for a meeting for that just now. So if you want, you can join me. All right, sure. Well, we'll continue to discuss Nokri.com's expansion plans after this quick meeting. This is of our media, which is the internet. That, and the other thing is the business environment between us, the regulatory and the business environment. Very I'd like to meet Sudhir Bhargav. Hi. Uh, and Sudhir works with Amrish, and Amrish is our CFO, Hi. and uh, a director and co-promoter. And uh, Amrish has been with us since the year 2000, uh, shortly after the ICIC investment. And he's the guy who saw us through the meltdown and uh, all those two, three years of heavy cost control and things. Yeah. So you budget for just about everything, including things like <laughs> flower arrangement here? Yeah, I was just, in fact, thinking to myself that, you know, these flowers aren't us. And the reason is, I think, uh, over a period of time, we've sort of uh, fitted into a culture which is more sort of cut and dried, if I may just use the term. So uh, we are a fairly, uh, you know, a company which, in, in a sense, you could call it a traditional. Certainly a person walking from outside might believe that we are traditional in our uh, work style. Well, Sanjeev is busy in the meeting, and we're going to catch him after he's done with it.